Hello guys, welcome to EGTV Presents Tech View, another episode. Um, in this episode, uh, I'll show you guys how you can create a virtual machine and on top of the virtual machine, how you can install Windows operating system. So the virtual machine means, yes, but you can create a virtual machines in uh, Windows, sorry, uh, VM or workstation, virtual box, but the video I'm making right now is not for uh, creating a VM on workstation or any um, uh, Oracle virtual box. It's in VMR ESXi. Inside the VMR ESXi. So um, let's get started. All right. So this is the ESXi. Uh, one of my ESX I just logged in. So how you gonna create a virtual machine? First, you have to create a virtual machine, which is gonna be act like as a physical machine. And on and, and on top of that, we're gonna install the Windows operating system. So I'll show you step by step from the beginning to end, what you need to do. So one thing you have to keep in your mind, if you want to install Windows operating system, you definitely, you, you will have, you need to have Windows ISO file, operating system ISO file. So it can be Windows 10, Windows 20, 12, Windows 20, sorry, Windows 10, Windows 11, it's the, which is end user level operating system. Or if you want to install a uh, Windows Server operating system, that means like it can be Windows 2012 or two, Windows 2016, 2019 or 2022, any kind of Windows 20, uh, Windows Server operating system. So you have to download the ISO file from uh, Microsoft side or any other site or whatever you can get it. So after you download the ISO file, you have to upload it to your data store. Which data store are you gonna upload? You can upload a shell storage or you can upload a local storage, but local storage is really enterprise level. Nobody do that because local storage means local storage. So if you upload a file or ISO to this ESXi local storage, that means this ISO file will be available only for this host. But if you have a 50 ESXi host, and if you want to create a Windows virtual machine, each each ESXi host, that what, then what are we gonna do? We have to upload ISO file in 50 times individually, each and every ESXi host lo lo local storage, if you use the local storage, which is not, Actually, nobody can do that. That's why people usually use share storage. So one share storage, you can share with multiple ESXi. But anyway, the demonstration I'll, the demonstration I will show you right now is, um, uh, I don't have any share storage here. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do it from local storage. So what I did, I uploaded the file. How I uploaded the file, I just selected my share storage, and I go inside of this, I select one of the data store, both are local storage. I have two data store in, in my, as a local storage. And then I, after I select this one from the left side and the right side, I got the properties of this local storage and I go to the data store browser, click here and it took me to other window. And here I have created a folder like this, just create simply like this and then provide a name and clear. See here, it's created, right? I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. So after you selected and uh, created, I, I created ISO file ISO like this, and then select the upload and upload the file. So I already uploaded two operating system, 2016 and 2019. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to show you how to install 2019. So that's what I have here. So I will use it later on, okay? So what, this is the prerequisite. You have to have everything ready to create a virtual machine. So now, Step, the steps is going to start now, how to create a virtual machine. So right click on the left side, you see the virtual machine, right click here, and then create or register VM. But if you have a vCenter, your interface will be different. Your options will be different. So create a re or register virtual machine, click here, and then create new virtual machine, select this one, click next, and then provide a name. So I can provide a name, uh, anything, say for example, if my organization name is ELS, I can say ELS, it's a uh, virtual machine, I can say V, 
and if it is physical we can p uh, we can use p okay virtual and if it is a pro, uh, virtual windows right uh, it's a windows if it is linux then i can i gonna use it linux l but this is a windows that's why i'm going to use um w and then it's a if uh, if it is a production you can use p if it is a development you can use d and then uh the application say if it is monitoring you can say mon if it is a like something else backup you can say bsek up backup or if it is whatever for the reason so you can just type that one so i can say for example this i want to make it as a jump machine jump 02 or something whatever it doesn't matter what is the name is so it up to you but you if you work for a company you should use company's naming naming standard which is called naming convention right and then compatibility esxi 6.7 virtual machine compatibility so by default is a 6.7 because the um, esxi server i logged in right now i logged in right now this one has a esxi 6.7 operating system that's why when I create a virtual machine, by default, the compatibility level is coming up with ESXi 6.7. What does it mean? So the virtual machine I'm going to create, that machine will be compatible with this host, which that means um, any kind of 6.7 ESXi host, you can move this virtual machine and that's gonna be work. And also higher version, that means if you have a ESXA 7 or ESXA 8 in your environment, and if you move this virtual machine from 6.7 to ESXA 7 or ESXA 8, still your machine is gonna be work. But, but if your compatibility level is 6.7 and in your environment you have a ESXA 6.5 or ESXA 6.0, and you are trying to move this machine to that ESXA host, which is 6.5 ESXA host, this machine is not gonna be work. This virtual machine not gonna work because this machine compatibility level is 6.7. So I believe you understand. So that means whatever the compatibility level is gonna be compatible with that similar version and also the higher version. Now, guest OS family. Guest OS family means virtual machines from guest OS operating system. So which operating system you're gonna install? Linux, Mac OS, others, or Windows? So our target is Windows, select the Windows and then guest OS version. So Windows, which version you want to install? So we want to install 2019, but uh, VMware has only up to 2016. So if you select 2016, that means you can have upper version. That means 2019 and 2022, you can install on this guest OS version. Click next and then select the data store. So if you have a data store, uh, multiple data store, um, obviously when you work for a company, you should have a um, shared storage. And also you should not, you should, and you must be use the local storage. Don't use, uh, sorry, lo no, no, lo local storage, share storage. Don't use local storage because local storage, will, you cannot get any kind of redundancy. And also, if if the host goes down, your machine will be down. So make sure whenever you create a virtual machine, make sure you choose a uh, shared storage. But in my, my case is different, it's a demonstration. I don't have any uh, shared storage here. So I, I selected the local storage. Click next. Click next, okay. Now, CPU. So I'm going to use H CPU, for example, H CPU, right? So if you go expand it, you're going to see here one core per socket. That means socket shows eight, core shows one. That means each socket you are, you are telling to use one core for each socket. And total socket is eight USM for this virtual machine. But do you think this is the right configuration? Exactly not. Why? Because your physical machine doesn't have a socket. Your physical machine has only, only two sockets. So how are you gonna make it happen as a map? So you can say four. So four core, four core per socket. That means you can have four times two, physical socket is two, four times two, that means eight. 
If you make it like 12, how can you do it? How you can do that? So go with six. Six into two, 12. So make sure you do that and CPU hot plug. So I'm going to actually make it down eight and four. CPU hot plug enable, what does it mean? It means that if you, um, if you have a CPU hot plug enabled, um, in this virtual machine, when it's running, in the running mode, if the application or owner or maybe any user complain, the machine is slow. And if you get a uh, request to increase the CPU, you cannot increase when the machine is running if this option is not enabled. So if this option is not enabled, CPU hot plug is not enabled, you have to power off the machine, then you have to increase. But if you have a CPU hot plug enabled, uh, in that case, you don't need to power off. You can, um, like on the fly, you can increase the CPU. And then the same thing on the memory. So I'm going to change it to gigabyte, okay, which is four gigabyte, but expand it again. The reason is make sure you have a memory hot plug enabled. That means the same thing, same story. Uh, whenever you need to increase the memory on the fly, you can increase it if you have a memory hot plug enabled. Now hard disk. Yes. So I'm going to assign 60 gigabyte of hard disk, but expand it. And then you're gonna see thick provision lazy zero. What does it mean? It means your total maximum storage is 753.93 gigabyte. Out of this space, you are assigning 60 gigabyte for this virtual machine. But when you install the operating system and the machine is running, it's not gonna utilize your all 60% storage, all 60 GB storage. So it most probably it's gonna consume 30 gigabyte of uh, storage. That means 50% utilization and, and the rest 50% will be staying on this virtual machine, uh, uh, what is called idle, right? Unused. If you use the thick provision, it's not gonna release to other, it's not gonna release to the total maximum storage. So if this, is, this one is not recommended. This is by default, but not recommended. Most of the system admin makes mistake here. So please go with thin provision. So thin provision means you assign 60 gig for this virtual machine, whatever is used, it's gonna, whatever the con it consume, it's gonna keep it and rest of the space, rest of the storage, it's gonna release it to the original storage here. And then if we ha have another machine here, this total storage can sh provide that storage to other, other, other virtual machine. So that means it can share the storage. You can have better utilization of your storage. That's why you should go all the time with thin provision, except if your application demand to do it, thick provision. The application you're gonna use for this, in this virtual machine, if that application required to have thick provision, that in that case, go with this, otherwise you don't need to. And thick provision equal zero is very special case. Like if you use uh, fault tolerance, in that case, you should use it because fault tolerance requirement is you have to have this configuration, uh, this provisioning method, okay? So in average, we're gonna do for thin provision all the time. Just remember, that's it for this one. And I want to show you one other, another thing, network adapter. So by default network adapter is BM network. And if you expand it, you're gonna see here, um, the adapter type is E1000E. That means this adapter can be capable, this adapter capability is only one gig connection. So it can provide you one gig speed bandwidth is one gig speed bandwidth, okay? But if you want more than one gig, how are you gonna do that? So just change it to BMX net three. So it can be also interview question like E100E is one gig connections, BMX net three is how much? 10 gig connections. And now um, host device. So host device, now the installation for your yeah, virtual machine, right? So data store ISO and you see here, Ahead of time, I have uploaded, that's why I have here. So select, I'm going to select the 2019 ISO and select it and click. Okay, but before you click next, go up, go up, 
go to the BM option. So we, whatever the configuration we did here is it's in under B, virtual hardware. Now go to the second tab, BM option. So on the BM option, first expand VMware tools and check mark here, tools upgrade VMware tools. So every time when you reboot the machine, it's gonna update the, it's gonna check the VMware tools. If there is any available latest VMware tools, it's gonna install automatically. So you don't need to do it manually. That's what it means. But first time you have to do manually and then it's gonna do automatically, okay? So boot option. EFI, change this one to BIOS. Otherwise it can, it's not gonna be boot. BIOS and then click next. All right, and now finish. So when you click finish, it's, it's gonna create, it's gonna create a machine here, you see? Yes, now I'm going to just check mark, uh, just click it and power on. If when I power on, click here, immediately you're gonna see it's loading the file for installation. So for better viewing, I'm going to make it big screen, like double click here, then it's gonna open as a full screen. So I'm going to move this one a little bit, in, okay, here. That's better, right? So click next and then install. It's pretty simple. Installation of Windows operating system is pretty simple. Windows 10, Windows 11, um, Windows 20, 2012 server, Windows 2016, 2019, everything is same, like on the same way. But one thing for the server operating system, uh, as I told you guys, like there is a two um, types of operating system, standard and data center. Standard edition and data center edition. But the standard edition has two types, standard and standard desktop experience. And data center also has the same, data center and data center desktop experience. So standard and data center, the, the regular one is a, is kind of command based operating system, Windows operating system. But we are not going with this, the regular one, we are going with standard with on the parenthesis desktop experience. So we are going with desktop experience. We are going to select this one, select next. Make sure select desktop experience. Okay, accept the terms, uh, accept the license terms. Uh, each and every software you have to do that. Click next. Okay, so the second option, custom install Windows only advanced. All the time, select the second one, second option. I just click it and then it will take you to another screen. It shows drive zero unlocated space because I have assigned only one drive, one hard disk, right? So it's gonna, it will create C drive when I install the operating system. So now you need to make a partition here. So if you click new, it's gonna show you the total space. Here is 60 gig. If you want to create a two partition, you can create a two partition, but nobody do that on a virtual machine environment. And also if you need another, you can later on, you can add one more here. I'll show you how, how we can do that later on. So click apply. So the whole space is gonna be make one partition, but you wanna see here two partition actually, but one is for um, system reserve. Okay, system reserve is for 549 megabyte and rest of the space, which is 59.5 gigabyte is a primary and it's selected. Just click next on the second one. So now it's going to install and it's gonna take a little bit time. Like most probably it's gonna take three to four minutes All right, so it's almost done. So it's almost done. Now, so the Windows installation is pretty easy and simple. So within short time, we're gonna see. So now if we are in a 
full uh, full window mode. But if you want to go exit from here, you can just say click here and then click X, or you can press the escape button. So we have to like exit from this full mode because um, within short time it's gonna show you press control alter delete to log in. But if you do the press control alter delete from your keyboard, it's gonna be lock your laptop screen. But uh, not right now, but okay. So uh, after it's reboot, it shows um, the this is the first skin after install and it's rebooted. And then this is the first skin you're gonna get. And here it shows username is administrator, right? Username is administrator. So provide the administrator password. If this is the first time, and this administrator is a username. This administrator is a local administrator. It has a superpower. So the username is administrator and also that user has a administrative privilege access. Like sounds like it's a confusing word because username and its power is both are same. Administrator has the administrator privilege access. So that's why it's a little bit confusing. But anyway, this is a username and it's a local admin. It's a local user, local user, admin user, local admin user and username is administrator. So password is, you're gonna provide the password first time when you logged in. So we are going to assign local admin password, which is administrator, right? All right, and click finish. And then now it's finalizing everything. Okay, so now it says, Press Control Alter Delete to unlock. Do you think you can do that from here? Do you think you can click from here? You cannot do that. You cannot do that. So what you can do, I'm going to exit out from here, then if you see action and then guest to us and then cook very sweep like soft handed you have to move your mouse send key and control alter delete from here all right so i get the screen for login login screen okay now i'm able to log in right so i'm going to and also, after you log in, your first task will be to install BMR tools because you see my mouse movement is not smooth. My keyboard input is not smooth. The graphics is not, not smooth. So to make it happen, to make everything operational, you should install BMR tools because a BMR virtual machine the requirement, if you deploy first time, you have to install BMR tools. So how are you gonna install the BMR tools and where are you gonna get it? So the first time you just click the same action option and then it's gonna give you a list from the list, same option, guest OS, move your mouse, you see here, install BMR tools, click here. And now through this is gonna mount it, it's gonna mount it to inside the, inside the, uh, OS, you see here, it says DVD, it's a, a, a virtual DVD. It's mounted as a virtual DVD. So you can click here or you can open a folder, uh, open the folder. Okay, I'm going to make it bigger, then it's, it's easy to understand. Okay, and also when, when it's loaded, it, it's gonna say server manager. You don't need it actually, so you just say don't show again. And this is the server manager options. So we need it. But before we do with the server managers, uh, local server options, uh, first in, I'm, I'm going to install the, uh, you see my mouse movement is not that smooth. So I need to install the BMR tools. So click here, folder file explorer, and then go to the, this PC. And then you're gonna see there is a two drive, one is C drive, another one is D drive with DVD drive. And when I click BMR tools upgrade, then that time automatically it's attached mounted as a DVD drive like this. 
So double click on it, it's gonna start automatically installation or maybe open, open the folder and then you can say set up 64 and or right click uh, right click and run as an administrator. So anyway, you can do it like this way or, or other way. So it's gonna start installing. So we're gonna do multiple tasks at the same time. I'm going to just open this one and click next and click next and install. So after the installation is finished, it's gonna ask you to reboot it because BMR tools required reboot. Otherwise, it's not you're not gonna get the effect, the reason you installed the upper, uh, BMR tools. So you have to reboot it, reboot the machine. But, okay, networks. Okay, so this here, before my network was showing like cross, now my network is okay. Why? Because of the BMR tools. So when I install BMR tools, and now everything is shows okay. I have the network connections. So you must register your system before configuration change made to the BMR tools take effect. So click here, but I don't wanna click yet. Yes, right now, I just leave it like this. I'll do it later on because the reason is, I have some more configurations I need to do, which is uh, from the server manager, by default it was selected dashboard, but I said go, go to the local servers and right after installation of your uh, BMR tools, make sure you change the time zone. Uh, so I'm going to change the time zone to uh, EST because I'm in EST zone, but if what it, it depends on you, which zone you are and your company. So based on that, uh, it doesn't matter where you are, but it, if you work remotely, which state you are belongs to, it doesn't matter. Which time zone you are belongs to, it doesn't matter all the time whatever the company you are working for, based on their location, which times uh, zone they are belongs to, based on that change this time. So I'm in Eastern zone, that's why I'm, I'm selecting this one, UTC 05. And make sure automatically adjust clock to daylight savings time. Click okay. So my time now is, is exactly 10.55, 10.55 is matching, right? Click okay. And then here, some stuff you need to do, Windows Firewall. You need to turn off the Windows Firewall temporarily, not permanently. Security-wise, you, you need it, but whenever you work for a company, you add the machine with the domain, automatically through the GPU policy, it's gonna be enabled again. But right now I'm saying, before you add with the domain, temporarily, after you build the point virtual machine, temporarily, just disable, disable it. Domain, okay, and then back. So domain network, disable, private network. So domain, private, and public, three things you need to disable. So I did domain network, private network, and last one is public and disable, done, and close it. So I did it, it's done, it's, it's still showing on, but if you refresh it, it's gonna show you uh, off. You see, it's off. And also remote desktop is disable, make it enable, and allow, allow and uncheck this one, but you should be check mark on this, but later on by the, through the GPU is gonna be checked. So for now, just temporarily uncheck it, apply and okay. So we enable remote desktop. Now IPv4 address, so this one, click here, by default it has an IP address, but if it has an IP address like this, like this, right? You see, the ACP enable, yes, but you should assign an IP address. How are you gonna assign an IP address? So just click properties and make sure uncheck the uh, uh, IPv6 and double double click on IPv4 and then assign, uh, use the following IP address and then provide the IP address, separate mask, default gateway, uh, prefer DNS and alternate DNS and click okay. And that's how you're gonna assign a static IP address. But I'm not assigning right now because uh, I'm not showing you what specific IP address right now. So. This is what you need to do, right? And then last one. So uh, this is the sixth option. So first is after you deploy virtual machine, you have to install VMR tools. Second option is change the time zone. Third is firewall. Fourth is remote desktop. Fifth is IP address and then computer name. So that computer name we provided when we create a virtual machine, that's the inventory name. That's not actual machine name, that's the inventory name of this machine. 
but the actual machine name is here. You have to change, click here, computer name, then it will take you to the other screen, the system properties and change, and then computer name. So whatever you want, you can type it and click OK. Then it will ask you to reboot it. So that's why I didn't reboot because you can both reboot you can do in the same time. You don't need to have separate, separate reboot, okay? That's why I, I just wait. But right now I'm not changing. I just install this one, okay? Click yes. Now it's rebooting. So this is the way you can install Windows Server operating system. Not only Windows Server operating system, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 2012 or 2, Windows 16, uh, 2016, 2019, 2022, same, 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 same way. And also after you install, you're gonna do the same six step, the one I did. So now, I'm going to exit out because I have to I have to do the control alter delete because I don't do control alter delete from your keyboard. If you do that, your screen will be locked like this. Your screen will be locked. Your screen will be locked. So don't do that. Just go action. And then if you close it, it doesn't matter. Just click it here again, it's gonna be open. Action. Okay, see now the menu is going uh, up, right? Click outside. Click again. Okay, now it's here. So you see it now control order delete is here. It's not anymore here. If it still is here too, but you don't need to go like this. So it's first time when you click it, it's gonna come here. <coughs> control order delete. Click control order delete. Then you're gonna see the login screen. Now you can make it big again. Double click on it, make it big. You see now it's full screen. So Yes. So it's open in a big screen. So now resolution and everything, resolve, everything done. Mouse movement is very smooth. And you see here, now everything is very smooth. You see here, five, off, enable, everything is ready. Now we can do the RDP here. So that's all, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And um, if you are if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and also don't forget to click the bell icon to get my next video update. And if you think this video will help you, please make some comments, which will encourage me to make more videos for you guys. And also please share with your friends, family, or your um, coworker. If you think they if they can benefit it like as you. And thank you, thanks for watching.